I'm running out of time, and there's one here that I must get into. Uh, Dear Lord Clavinus Maximus the Wise, I was in a relationship for two years with a woman I absolutely adored and truly believed that I was going to spend the rest of my life with. We were deeply in love and making arrangements to move in together when she decided out of nowhere, at least from my perspective, that she didn't think we had a future together. It's been six months and I'm still not over her. What advice can you give me for trying to move on and finding a woman to start a life with? Uh, that's from Jacob. Uh, so this is grief. You're experiencing grief. And I've said this a couple of times, but it is worth saying, uh, grief is a desert that has to be crossed on foot. And the reason I say that is because uh, grief is not something, you know, people want you to get over grief. They're very impatient with it. It usually takes about a year. That is the average uh, time it takes to get, get through grieving. But the thing is, grief is, when I say it's a desert that has to be crossed on foot, what I mean is that you actually are on a journey through something. You're not just in a pool unless you just languish in it. Uh, you're actually journeying through something. And it's important when you journey across a wasteland, which is what grief is like, it's important where you come out on the other side. Are you going to come out in, you know, a, a, a slum or are you going to come out in the spiritual Vegas, you know, where everything is good, you know, and that's why I think it's, if you can, if you believe and you can pray, I think that's a very important that you're following God through that desert. So you get on the other side, uh, when you come out on the other side, that you are actually richer and deeper for the journey. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to use the grief to make you a better person. Listen, I've grieved over numerous things, including a broken heart. And one of the things that happens is it becomes part of who you are. You know, as I said before, we live in time. We continue to be the person that we were before. And that melancholy that you've been through, that sadness becomes a kind of sweeter uh, melancholy that helps you to appreciate the, the beautiful things that are happening in your life at this moment, because all things, good and bad, pass away. When you come to the other side, and you will, I, you know, if you keep journeying, the, re the reason people get stuck in grief is they become proud of their grief. They become fascinated by it and addicted by it. And so that you don't want to do that. You want to keep moving, keep walking forward. And when you do, just open your, you know, you'll, your heart will open up again. You open your heart up to love and you don't have to go and find the girl you marry to, you know, the sloppy seconds to replace this girl. You want to start to meet women and hopefully find one that you can love again. And I know you will. I know you will. You just have to make that journey and be patient with it because not only, not only do we ourselves get impatient with our grief, the people around us get impatient with our grief. Even if they love us, they just get so tired of hearing us bring up the same subjects again. And, you know, why? When are you going to stop? And what you have to realize is this is part of the process. It's a it's a journey. You just cannot uh, hurry. You just have to make the journey. And uh, you will get to the other side, but it's important. And if you can pray and uh, believe, uh, that will help you to get to a, a good place when you get to the other side because grief is part of life.